Hello, this is Artyom from Xarial and in today's video I'm going to show you how we are using integration and unit tests to improve the quality of our xcat.net framework. xcat.net is a free and open source framework which simplifies the development of SolidWorks add-ins, standalone applications for SolidWorks, macro features, property manager pages and much more. This is one of the most popular framework for SolidWorks in NuGet.org. As it is used by more and more developers in the world, as well as here at Xarial, we're using this framework as a backbone for all our products and the bespoke developments we're doing for our customers. It is vital to ensure the quality of this framework. One of the mechanisms we are using in xcard.net is an embedded unit in integration tests. This allows us to capture most of the regression issues when we do a changes in xcat.net or when there is a new release of SolidWorks. xcat.net solution has a number of projects dedicated to unit tests. Those are the tests which use using mocks uh, to test certain functionality, so they do not require to have SolidWorks to run those tests. So for example, here I have tests for SolidWorks and SolidWorks Document Manager project. In a similar way, there are integration tests, and those are using SolidWorks API and running SolidWorks instance to test certain functionality directly in SolidWorks. So those are usually executed much slower than unit tests. So for example, you can see here we have some integration tests where we can set a SolidWorks version to run. So in our case, it's SolidWorks 2021. So let's now go to the test explorer and run all of the tests to test the functionality in SolidWorks 2021. When we run our test, Visual Studio is going to run unit and integration tests. Unit tests are usually much faster, so it just takes few seconds or even milliseconds to run all of those tests. Integration tests you can see are running SolidWorks, in our case it's 2021, and it's just going to take a bit slower, so I'm just going to speed up the video. We can expand the nodes to see the results. So you can see 15 tests for components have been run successfully, and it's just now switched to another integration test. So let's just speed up the video and see the final result of our unit tests and integration tests. So this process would take several minutes. So as you can see, on average, each group is about 20, 30 seconds. So now it's all completed and you can see all of our tests have been successful. So let's now change the version of SolarWorks and see how this framework is going to perform in SolarWorks 2022. Because it was just released last week. So I can just change our constant here so I'm using that in SolidWorks and SolidWorks Document Manager test. So I just want to change it in two places. So now we set the version to 2022 and let's start our integration and in unit tests again. So as you can see, it's now going to start SolidWorks and now it is SolidWorks 2022 SP0. So let's see how it's going to perform. SolidWorks and SolidWorks API is backward compatible, so I expect all tests to pass. But as you can see, our first test for virtual component has failed and we can inspect the error. But let's now continue with our integration test and find all of the tests which failed and we're going to investigate the issue closer. When tests have been run, we can just filter error tests to investigate the issue. So let's activate virtual component test and look at the error. So as you can see, this is a com exception. The remote procedure has failed. That usually indicates that SolidWorks has crashed. The second test is xcat.net exception, which indicates that conf1, which is a configuration, is not found in our test document. Let's go to test and debug it step by step. Unit test is just a function which you can debug in a normal way. So let's see how it works. So you can see it's starting SolidWorks. It's going to open our test document and it's going to collect all of the components from the configuration, I'm going to select our component names, and going to select the document from that component. This test just collects the data about the reference documents of the components, and at the end, it's just going to close the document, just co calling the close doc API, and you can see this is the API which is causing SolidWorks to crash. Now let's find out if that API causing the crash or if I close the document from user interface, it's also going to crash SolidWorks. So I'm going to debug my unit test again. I'm just going to put the breakpoint at the end of the using statement. And I'm just going to stop my unit test. So it's not going to close document and SolidWorks. 
I can activate SolidWorks. So and investigate my current environment. So you can see I have assembly and the document of the suppressed virtual component is activated in its own window. If I close assembly while the document is open, you can see my SolidWorks is crashing. As a last validation step, let's run a clean test. So first I'm going to clean my solution. So there is no traces of my add-ins or code in SolidWorks. I'm just going to start SolidWorks and try to replicate those steps manually. So I'm just going to open my virtual assembly in SolidWorks. Now I'm going to activate the component which is suppressed. So you can see that's here. Now I'm just going to activate assembly, close it assembly. And you can see that my SolidWorks is crashing. So I confirmed that it is not my code which is causing the crash. Although there seems to be a regression bug in SolidWorks 2022 because our tests were run successfully in SolidWorks 2021, this particular crash is not caused by the tested API. That means is as long as our API is working correctly, we can try to avoid this crash and mark the test as successful. One of the benefits of xcard.net is it's trying to wrap known issues or bugs in SolidWorks API and present the user with the workarounds directly in the framework. In this case, the consumer of xcard.net might not even know that the currently executed API method is actually a workaround rather than direct SolidWorks API call. But this particular case is not of concern, so let's just find how to make SolidWorks to not crash and modify our test accordingly. I suspect that this particular crash is caused by the fact that we're firstly closing the host assembly document while keeping the model doc of our virtual component open. So let's test that and first you close the document of our virtual component followed by the assembly document. So let's close the part document, now assembly document, and you can see SolidWorks is not crashing. So now we can safely modify our integration test to close all of the reference document of this assembly before closing the assembly itself. Is committed method indicates if my document is loaded and if it is so, we can just close it. I usually prefer to add some node because this will tell me why I done that in this particular unit test. So now we can run our virtual component test and see if it's successful. So you can see now this test has been executed successfully. So let's take a look at our second test. And this one was the get Weldman cut list properties test. I just run it to make sure it is failing. Yeah, so it is failing. We can just go to test and investigate the issue here. So our is starting. We hit a breakpoint, we're opening our test model, and I suspect this is a call which is gonna fail. We're trying to access configuration by name, conf1. So let me just uh, drop that into the watch list and see all of the available configurations. So as you can see in SolidWorks, because it's a weldment part, it is added the as machined as welded suffix, and that's why it cannot load that configuration. So there is some change in SolidWorks API here. But as far as XCAD API concern, this does not cause a massive problem. So I just need to modify my test to serve the need. I also need to make sure that this is going to be executed correctly in previous versions of SolidWorks. I'm just going to use a start Swiss function to find the configuration by the start of the name. So now you can see this has run correctly. As a summary, I'm quite happy with the results. So all of my tests are now successful and the two which have been failed are not caused directly by API failure, rather just some different circumstances. All of the code compilation, validation, signing, as well as publishing packages to NuGet are completely automated via CI CD, continuous integration and continuous deployment. And the unit tests are also automated. So every time I push the code, it is going to compile and it is going to run unit test. And if any of those failed, it is not going to proceed. So in this case, you can see that 100% of tests are now passed. We encourage you to try xcard.net and see how it could drastically simplify the development of SolidWorks applications. You can join our social media channels by following the links in the description of this video to have more access to resources, community and developers of xcard.net. Thank you for watching this video.